Hey you folks, how's it going? Today we are reviewing a game that I had been eyeing off for the longest time at my local store. Then I happened to get a voucher for that store for my birthday a couple of months back, so I thought I would finally bite the bullet. This is a game about action-packed adventures in a cartoonish world. This is Troubleshooters from Modfius Entertainment. Troubleshooters takes place in a cartoonish version of the 1960s. The game's main inspiration comes from the French-Belgian comics of the late 20th century, like the adventures of Tintin. While the scale of this game is capable of being global, the main focus of this book is Europe, North America, and Asia. This choice of setting is in part because of its inspiration, but also this variety in cultures allows players a lot of freedom when creating a character. While the 1960s of this game could reflect some of the real-life distressing aspects of the 1960s, mostly the game is focused on the brighter side of things. While there are a lot of terrible things happening in the 1960s, generally it's also viewed as a really optimistic era. This game is also literally a cartoon. While the characters of this game often face grave danger, death is a rare occurrence in this world. As a little kid, I really loved the comics by Hergé, particularly the adventures of Tintin. So I really resonate and understand this setting. Troubleshooters is a game without classes for your characters. The characters you make in this game are set apart from one another by their different skill scores, their different attributes, and any complications that a player character might have. If this sounds really intimidating, there are actually some archetypes available in the game for you to base your character off. These will suggest what ability scores, skills, and complications you perhaps might want to invest in for this type of character. They might also mention some other interesting character features that might be worth having. There are a lot of special skills that you can browse from in this game and choose to play with. Some of these specialist skills require you to have a base score of a certain number or higher to take on those skills, whereas others are open to all skill levels. Something really helpful about character creation is it also explicitly sets out a time and a step for the players to discuss how their characters know each other. Did they meet on a previous adventure together? Are they literal partners in crime? There's plenty of examples and ideas set out in the book to make these characters work as a team. To play this game, the dice you need are some D10s, D100s, and D6s. For most of the game, you will be rolling a d100 and a d10 together to find a number between 1 and 100. This is known as a percentile die situation. Generally, to succeed at anything, you want to roll below the number you have in a score. For example, if you have an ability score in one area of 70%, a 68 is a success, but a 72 is not. For most simple tests, you will roll these two die once. If you do fail the roll, that just means the task was failed. You can't arbitrarily re-roll the die to just keep trying. You have to find a reason for the situation to have changed. The only other exception is if someone has a special skill they can pull out to try use to solve the situation. Another way you can change a role is by expending story points to flip the role. What this means is you swap the values of the D100 and the D10. So a 42 can become a 24. There are more complicated tests that require multiple successes at different abilities. These challenges might come up when everyone in the team is working together to work on a problem. Though if one character fails at a test, no one else in the group can reattempt it. Depending how many successes are gained in these skill challenges, the player characters could be left in a much better place or in a much worse one. If need be, two characters can face off each other using their dice. Both players will roll their dice to try get the better score. Matching generally means a stalemate. 
Combat works in a similar way. The attacker will roll their die to try have a successful attack while the opposing side might roll some form of defensive roll. If the attack roll succeeds, damage is usually done with the d6s. If you roll a 6 on the die though, the die explodes and you get to add another die to your pool to roll. Basically, you do this until you run out of 6s. I do find that this leads to some very exciting roles and events in game. Whenever you use one of your skills or ability scores in a cool or interesting way, you get to tick next to that score and that could mean your character gets to advance in the next session. These advancements can be various character improvements. There are a few mechanics of this game that I haven't mentioned in this review, mostly because I'm running out of time. In my opinion, this game has pretty medium crunch. It can be intimidating to read, but for most things you'll be rolling those percentile dice. The atmosphere of this game is really fun, and that is definitely reflected in the artwork. All of the images are really bright, dynamic, and really expressive. There are plenty of resources for the Game Master in this game, who's called the Guild Master. They include some ideas for adventures, various prompts, and how to handle the mechanical side of things. Also, there's a great list of goons that you can reskin to run against your players. One thing I don't like about this manual is it stipulates the need to buy extra resources to play this game. The character sheets in this game are called passports, and you are supposed to buy these passports separately to the base game. At the back of the game there is included an emergency passport, but the way it's framed in the book it definitely wants you to go and buy the outside character sheets rather than photocopying the one at the back. I really don't like this. Something I like about tabletop role-playing games is for a lot of them you can buy a single book and you are ready to play the game. I don't like this idea of marketing special dice or special character sheets. The passports that are available for sale do look nice, it's just that they're not actually necessary. If you were a fan of the comics from this era, I would highly recommend having a look into this game. There's some decent depth to the mechanics for players and game masters to explore. The atmosphere is also really fun, and I think a lot of roleplay focused gamers will really get into playing around in this universe. The one thing you won't find in this game is realistic violence. It's a cartoon. The source book for this game is $40 US. I think that's a pretty reasonable price for a hardcover book. As someone who grew up on the adventures of Tintin, I had a lot of fun reading and reviewing this game for you all. If you were to build a character for this world, what kind of character would it be? Let me know your character concepts in the comments down below. While you're there, I encourage you to like, subscribe, maybe share with a friend. I've also started a coffee page where you can donate to the channel or just check out what reviews I am working on. I hope you're all well and I look forward to seeing you next time at the gaming table. Bye!